Good afternoon. I'm Sergeant Williams with the Hampton Police Division's Public Information Office. I'm joined here today by Chief Talbot, Assistant Chief Gallup, Captain Coleman, Captain Price, Captain Sheck, and Captain Warren. On January 31st, 2022, at approximately 9.06 a.m., officers were called and responded to the 100 block of Randallette Drive in reference to a missing juvenile who we all know now as Cody Bigsby. Officers arrived on scene at 9.16 a.m., and eight minutes later, multiple K-9 units arrived to assist. Within the hour, command staff and multiple detectives were already on scene. At 10.47 a.m., we formally requested the FBI to bring additional resources and technical support. At 11 a.m., the Hampton Police Division disseminated a press release and social media blast, which reached hundreds of thousands of people within our community. With the assistance of the local media, that reach extended well into the millions. By 11.30, the FBI arrived on scene, bringing additional agents as well as a plane to our aid. At 12.29, a reverse 911 call went out to residents and neighborhoods requesting information. By 1 p.m., officers had already searched the immediate surrounding areas of the apartment complex. Officers and detectives began canvassing every house while canine searches continued and drones were searching from the air. Additionally, Mr. Bigsby, Corey's father, had arrived at police headquarters and began speaking with, invest with investigators. In the coming days, the search would evolve into a massive coordinated effort with our federal, regional, and local partners to include citizen volunteers. Searches continued by land, air, and sea. Dive teams were deployed and drone teams scanned over 900 acres of remote marsh, waterways, and woodlands. As our search was taking place, investigative and forensic personnel worked around the clock to gather and process evidence to speak to anyone that might have knowledge about Cody's whereabouts. On the evening of Thursday, February 3rd, Corey Bixby was arrested and transported to lockup, where he was served with seven charges for felony child neglect. On Friday, February 4th, our search efforts began to transition into an investigative phase, and the massive grid search came to a slow conclusion. Since that day, our goal to find Cody has not changed. Our search has not stopped. Investigators are continuing to process immense amounts of evidence and follow up with every possible lead. With that, Chief Talbot will now provide additional comments. All right, good afternoon. I'm Mark Talbot. I'm the police chief for the Hampton Police Division. Uh, I'm going to begin this press conference like I started all of the press conferences with this case. I'm here on behalf of four-year-old Cody Bigsby. Uh, it has been 14 heart-wrenching days since he was reported missing by his father, Corey Bigsby. Sergeant Williams did a great job laying out the timeline of events, and he did an excellent job laying out all the work that we've put into this investigation. Uh, I am extremely proud of the work that was done, not only by the Hampton Police Division, but by our partner agencies and by members of the public who have been out there every single day with us. For that, we are extremely grateful. You know, an investigation like this has a lot of moving parts. You've just heard that. Uh, one aspect of an investigation of this nature is that it is important that I keep uh, in my mind all of the aspects of this investigation that ensure that it has the integrity that it needs to have. And, and that is uh, primarily why I'm speaking to you today. Uh, this past Friday, in an effort to ensure that everything that we've done has been consistent with our best and our obligation, we reviewed 
video footage of some of the interviews involving Corey Bigsby. So, so Mr. Bigsby came to the Hampton Police Division, I'll remind you, on January 31st to assist with this investigation. Uh, he had his three small children with him. Around 2.30 that day, Mr. Bigsby sat for a formal interview with our detectives. The detective in that case began the conversation by reminding Mr. Bigsby that he was there voluntarily, he was not uh, being detained by us, and that he was, uh, he had the right to an attorney if, if he chose to have an attorney with him. Mr. Bigsby uh, decided to waive his rights at that time and to answer our questions. Uh, he continued to answer questions for several hours and at some point it was suggested that uh, we would like Mr. Bigsby to take a polygraph examination. Uh, part of that polygraph examination that wasn't given by our agency, it was in fact given by a federal agency, involves again being reminded of his rights uh, to an attorney, a right not to speak, a right not to incriminate himself. Uh, he received and he waived those rights and he took the polygraph examination. Upon the conclusion of the polygraph examination, Mr. Bigsby resumed his interview with our detectives and uh, our partner agencies. In the midst of this follow-up interview, there was a heated exchange between Mr. Bigsby and the lead detective in this case. The heated exchange came about when there was a discussion about the results of that polygraph exam. I won't discuss the result, I'll just say there was a heated back and forth. In the midst of this heated exchange, Mr. Bigsby made a statement that I believe was mishandled by the Hampton Police Division. He made a statement that uh, indicated that he wanted to have legal counsel there with him. My assessment of his statement in that moment and a statement that he made several minutes later that was similar, expressing a desire for legal counsel, my assessment is that his desires should have been honored. They weren't. Ultimately, a decision like uh, this that surrounds what we will do, what, what the court system will do in response to this episode is, is for the Commonwealth attorney, is for Anton Bell. Uh, but we have our own obligation here. We didn't meet it, frankly. We have our own obligation to maintain the highest standards of conduct to make sure that we're not skirting any lines that appear to be inappropriate or are questionable. We also have a standard that involves every member in this organization providing clear and concise and accurate information all the way up the chain of command so that we can make the best decisions as it relates to any investigation, in particular when it comes to seeking justice for a four-year-old child. Uh, to give you a sense of the, the timing of, of what occurred, the problematic uh, behavior that was brought to my attention was brought to me late in the afternoon this past Friday. Uh, as soon as we discovered this, we ordered the entire command staff into the police station to do a full audit of all of the video recordings of uh, our interactions with Mr. Bigsby. Uh, that occurred throughout the weekend. Most of us were here all weekend completing that. Our analysis, our audit of that video left us in a much better place in terms of understanding what happened. Uh, it, it also allows us to be reassured and allows me to reassure the public that the charges that were filed against Mr. Bigsby 
are appropriate. Mr. Bigsby is the only person that we've found evidence against to indicate we need to continue to pay attention to him in order to find out where Cody Bigsby might be and, and what may have happened to him. Nothing that occurred has shaken my confidence surrounding whether or not we've paid attention to the right person or whether or not we've missed some key de detail. We have not. Our investigation is sound. Moving forward, we will continue to look at all the evidence. Uh, many of you have reported some of the work that we did this weekend. We, we are searching uh, different areas of the city. We, we are exploring uh, the, the forensic evidence even further. We're continuing to take this investigation wherever the facts are going to take us. I deeply regret uh, what I found out on Friday. Make no mistake about it. I am extremely disappointed with not only having to be the distraction that I spoke of previously, but I'm disappointed that we have done anything that may have slowed us down on our quest to bring justice to this child. Uh, that will be handled appropriately. Anybody who didn't live up to the standards that are important to us will be held accountable. And, and we will make sure that we continue to work as hard as we possibly can to bring more facts forward in this case and, and ultimately bring some degree of justice. With that, I will take your questions. Have the lead detectives been um, dismissed from the case? We have a new leadership team uh, and, and a new lead detective that we are going to have take over this case. Is he on any type of leave? He or she? Uh, the detective has been relieved of duty at this point. Does this uh, in any way jeopardize or imperil either the existing charges or future charges against Mr. Bigby? The <laughs> existing charges are, are sound and they are based on evidence that was obtained in the first hours of our interactions with Mr. Bigsby, I've been in contact with the Commonwealth attorney extensively, including right before I, I walked into this room. Uh, I believe that he will say more about that. Uh, we feel confident that those charges are appropriate and, and will stand. At an initial press conference, you went on record and said that he was there completely voluntarily. So at that point, had you not looked at any of the interrogation video? Uh, that, that is correct. You know, j j just to be clear, uh, reviewing nearly a hundred hours of video was a Herculean task that required uh, more than a dozen staff members who spent most of their weekend here. It, 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 was, it was a big effort. It, it is just not viable to to routinely view every second of videotape. It, it's not viable. Uh, but that's not an excuse for anything. My comments that I made previously were made bad, based on, frankly, bad information. And, and that just can't happen. And, and we will do everything that we need to do to make sure it doesn't happen again. So since he was a lead detective, had he, had he worked on any other high-profile missing cases like this where he would have been put in similar situations and then it did act, you know, appropriately? Again, a, a, a full internal affairs uh, investigation will be conducted. Uh, just like we paid attention to the facts in assessing Corey Bigsby's 
relationship to what happened here. We need to look at the facts to see exactly how everybody's behavior has impacted this investigation. Uh, it is too soon to say whether or not the mistakes that were made were intentional or if there is simply a, a, a different legal interpretation that uh, is, is causing uh, this, this dismay and, 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 and my unhappiness, frankly. Uh, we have a lot of work to do to figure out exactly what occurred, and, and until we do that work, we're not going to be able to say whether or not this could impact other cases. But, but that, that is certainly something that I'm uh, tracking and w we need to pay attention to. Is he still at the police station willingly up until he was arrested? Uh, so the, the question of whether or not he was here willingly ultimately seems like a, a, a simple question to answer yes or no. Uh, but the way that our criminal justice system works, it happens to be a question for the Commonwealth attorney to answer. And, and I would prefer to allow him to make that assessment. Um, in court documents, it said that he had confessed to police about leaving the children home alone. That's where those child neglect charges came from. Did he confess that before or after he asked for legal counsel? Before. Before. Could you confirm what date was it that he had the polygraph and when did that request happen for legal counsel? Uh, the polygraph examination occurred somewhere after 10 p.m. on January 31st. He made the request that I've alluded to where he mentions an attorney on February 1st, somewhere after 4 o'clock in the morning. We were told family got involved and kind of, you know, asked for an attorney ahead of time. Can you speak to when that happened compared to when he actually asked for one himself? Uh, I can't. I, I don't know precisely when the family got involved. I, I can tell you that uh, Mr. Bigsby's, just to restate, Mr. Bigsby's request came uh, around 4.13 in the morning on February 1st and again at around 4.20 on February 1st. And you mentioned that he was there with his three children. Um, do they play a role in this at all? I mean, if they were there with him, and I know you guys probably try and ask them some questions, do, what kind of, where do they stand with this? Then? I'd rather not comment on uh, our interactions with his children other than I, I'd like to repeat uh, what I said previously, that they're doing well right now. Um, and I'd like to leave it at that. As far as the search from now, into the future, I heard from different search party volunteers in the community that are helping. They want to know, are there efforts worth it? I mean, they want to search for him, but they don't even know if they're searching in the right areas. Should they keep going if they're volunteering, or what do you have to say to that? Keep going. Keep going. Uh, th this, this is all of our obligation. We're all here for, for Cody Bigsby. Uh, I don't know if, if those efforts will be fruitful, but what do you do? Do you sit and do nothing? I, I don't think so. I, I think that uh, we all have to consider what we might be able to do that's helpful. I believe that the number of people that have decided on their own to traipse about in the woods and, and, and dig through marshes and, and all these other things, you know, God bless them. Uh, keep going. Can you speak to um, a jacket that was found, a toddler-sized jacket on Saturday? Do you all know if that is tied to Cody's case or if it was just a random jacket? We do not know. We, we are investigating. Do you have any more information about the last time Cody was confirmed to be seen? Has that been confirmed when you were last year? I don't have information that I believe I can rely upon to answer that question. Is your team currently investigating any remains being found in the city right now? Yes. Do you have any reason to believe they could be Cody's? I do not have any reason to believe they could be Cody's, no. What is your understanding of why Corey Bixby was denied legal counsel initially? Uh, the, 
that has to be investigated. I, I do not know. I do, I do not have a, a good answer to that question. I don't have an answer that I'm confident in. Uh, at some point, I'll need to be confident, and, and I'll need to understand that much better than I do now. Do you feel like this could build a distrust between the department, the case, and the community? Y yes. It, it could. And, and I'm here uh, to avoid that and, and to uh, talk openly about what happened and, and to transparently lay out what occurred. This is something that we uncovered. This was not something that uh, was exposed. We did our own audit. We looked at our own conduct, and we've decided we didn't meet the standard that, that we need to adhere to. Um, it, it, is, it is sad but true. There, there is no insurance policy against the human condition. There are several hundred people in this organization. Many of them have been involved in one aspect or another in the investigation. And when you have an investigation of this magnitude, sooner or later you're going to run into something that isn't what you wanted it to be. That's what, that's what we have now. Uh, the, the, uh, that, that's not to say that you're always going to find uh, what you would deem to be misconduct, but uh, my experience has, has been that this is a very difficult business and, and these types of things are possible. So when you think about an interrogation between the lead detective and Big B, were there others watching that interrogation, maybe through video or like, you know, a window of some sort that saw it? And so does that mean, and if so, are other officers also being investigated and maybe placed on leave or maybe dismissed? There, there are a number of people in, in my organization that uh, need to be called to account for the answers to those questions. We, we do have uh, policies and, and systems in place that should have allowed us to do better than we did. Uh, we also, frankly, had a, a, a case here in which an, an experienced detective is doing his job, uh, has done a, a great work throughout his career, and to some degree you want to be able to rely upon that. Uh, all that uh, broke down somehow, and, and we need to spend some time figuring out how it broke down, why it broke down, and putting things in place so that it doesn't happen again. How long has that lead detective been with the department? Uh, 11 years, approximately. And to clarify, he's no longer a member? No, I did not say that. Okay. So he's off the case, but he's still with the department. Can you confirm what explain that, please? Uh, I'd like to leave it at that. So you can't say if he's placed on like a paid leave, non-paid leave? Uh, I, I can say that he is uh, on paid leave. Is there anything specific that prompted the release of the evidence or was it just concerning that you didn't let that stand? The, so, so the, I, I mean, a, a, a lot of, we are not oblivious to the narrative that has been driven around about our conduct in this case. Uh, we pay attention. Uh, you don't have to walk up to the Hampton Police Division with a formal complaint for us to pay attention to you. We heard members of the public who expressed concerns. Uh, that was one of the factors that uh, resulted in us deciding to look deeply into what we did. When we looked, we didn't like what we found, and, and that's why we're here. Okay, can you just, again, just reiterate the next I know you mentioned like an overall kind of investigation. Who's going to lead that? Is that going to come from outside the department, within the department? Uh, we, we are fully capable of continuing forward with this investigation. Uh, what we are doing moving forward is putting together a fresh set of eyes and, and, and ears and, and, and looking again at every step that we've taken moving forward.
Yes. Now, now, you know, we could certainly um, come across evidence uh, or some facts, or one of the members of the public who, who's out and about could, uh, like, like just occurred over this weekend, could say something or do something that causes us to uh, go back to where we've already been or, or to search uh, new ground. That, that, that's all still in play. No, I don't, I don't have additional information about that. I know you mentioned Ann Townsell speaking to some of the court things, but just on a general perspective, is there any chance that these neglect charges could be dropped and he could be free to go out of prison because of the mistakes that your lead detective made? There's no reasonable uh, belief that I have that that would be the case. In fact, we've looked, you know, let's make no mistake about the, 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 the most important thing here as it relates to that question is, is Mr. Bigsby in jail appropriately based on facts and evidence that we've obtained lawfully? Absolutely. Absolutely. There, there's no question about that that I have at this point. As a matter of fact, based on the thorough audit that we've done, I'm more certain than I was when I spoke about it previously. He's in a jail cell for appropriate reasons, and we learned that through an appropriate investigation. At this point, is he aware of what's taken place and his defense attorney as well? Bixby? We've taken steps to make sure that his uh, attorney is aware of what I'm explaining to you. Thank you. that the department standards have not been met and uh, that behavior brought to his attention on Friday uh, was then audited over the weekend and they looked over video of all of their interaction with Corey Bigsby, the father of Cody Bigsby, and that they found that there were statements that were mishandled. He says uh, that at points in the video uh, you see that Corey Bigsby asked for legal counsel at least twice. Uh, he says that his his desires should have been honored. They were not. The Commonwealth's attorney is now going to have to decide what happens as a result of that. Uh, but really speaking about the integrity of their investigation overall and saying that there are a lot of moving parts in this investigation and a lot of people who have been a part of this investigation, that that video review of the interviews with Corey Bigsby uh, were voluntary, that he came in voluntarily, and that he waived his rights when he came in. He answered questions. There was a polygraph administered by a federal agency and that during the follow up interview after that polygraph was taken, there was a heated exchange where he asked for this legal counsel again at least twice. Now, uh, Chief Talbot says he wants to reassure the public that the charges against Corey Bigsby are appropriate, that he is in jail right now on felony child neglect charges and that those are appropriate. As we look at a picture of him here, that he is still the only person of interest in this case, that nothing that occurred in the video shakes his confidence. They are looking into the right person and that he believes their investigation is sound. Again, this is going to have to come from the Commonwealth's attorney, though. He 